Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy Watchers. Very pleased to have in studio our good friend Avi Lipkin. Avi, welcome back to Prophecy Watchers and to Oklahoma City. Good to be here. Uh, we have a lot to share. Oh, we do today. Uh, Avi is uh, doing a lot of work in Israel politically. He's working on a couple of new DVDs. Uh, he's always active. He's always thinking. Uh, but today I want to talk uh, about the socio-political changes that we're viewing. Things are really happening fast. And let's talk about uh, socialism uh, versus, shall we say, the world. We are now witnessing the, what they call Brexit. Brexit is Britain leaving the European Union. And uh, there's a whole fuss about that now because there are other countries like France with Marine Le Pen, who's running with, from the Nationalist Party, um, Hurt Wilders in Holland. Uh, there are also rumblings taking place in Scandinavia, Italy, other countries. And what are they rumbling against? What are they, why is the European Union so unsuccessful in con convincing the Europeans to stay in the Union? Yes. And the reason is this. The Europeans, for 2,000 years, White Christian Europeans were slaughtering each other for 2,000 years. The French were fighting the, the Spanish and the Portuguese. Uh, the Italians, the Romans were fighting the French and the Germans and others. Uh, England, was the great empire, was fighting everyone. The Russians were fighting everyone. The Germans were fighting everyone. And tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of people died over 2,000 years. And the first purpose of the European Union when it was created it was mm -hmm. Benelux. Then it became common market. Then it became right. European Union. The first purpose of this union was to prevent war on European soil between white European Christians. And they're right. They're saying, why are we killing each other? It's crazy for white Christian Europeans to kill each other. And of course, you remember there were the wars of reformation between Catholics and Protestants. Sure. And there were wars between Catholics and the Russian Orthodox. And the Europeans actually succeeded in squelching any new wars on European soil since World War II. One of their criticisms of Vladimir Putin is this is the first time that a European nation invades another European nation, Ukraine. Hmm. Don't forget, Ukraine is Catholic and Russia is Orthodox. So there's still this war going on of a thousand years between Orthodox Christianity and Catholic. And I'm not, not taking sides here, I'm just explaining that history has this bloody, uh, you know, there's this bloody history in Europe. Now, the Europeans start to analyze why these wars take place. And they came to the conclusion that all the wars in Europe are because of God, religion, and nationalism. Hmm. Now, you know, in Christianity, there's a term called the one new man in Christ. Sure. It's a wonderful idea. In other words, if everyone becomes a Christian, believes in Christ, there, there won't be war because we'll all be one, you know. Uh, but there was also a rival system which was developed called socialism, communism, in the 1800s. And the approach was one new man in Marx. <laughs> how true. Now, how do you get one, one new man in Marx? You, ab you abolish God, you abolish religion, you abolish nationalism, there won't be war anymore. You have what they call the communists call the solidarity of all the nations. We Jews also... Uh, experienced terrible persecution. You know, we're the chosen people. Yeah. So you remember Tevye, you know, Fiddler on the Roof, <laughs> pointing his finger at God and says, why don't you go choose somebody else? Yeah. Why do you always choose us? And every time you choose us, we get slaughtered. We get expelled from our towns and we get persecuted and everything like that. So very often there were many, many Jews who abandoned Judaism, became communists, became socialists. Uh, these are the people who eventually left Europe, went to Israel, and founded the modern state of Israel, which to this day is still controlled by socialists. And even if Netanyahu, who's right-wing religious and nationalist, or represents right-wing religious and nationalists, um, but the power pyramid in Israel is still controlled by socialists. The army, the police, the, our State Department, Foreign Service, you know. The civil service in Israel is controlled by socialists. I was fired in 1990 from my job in the prime minister's office by socialists. They said, we know your views, you're out. And thank God there was a Christian world to receive me. I've been in the Christian world 27 years. I feel like Joseph. I was kicked out of my country by my brethren. 
But there's a reason, it's for life. You know, God has a reason for me to be here with you, and I'm going home to produce this new political party, mm -hmm. create a new political party, which will be the party of the Bible, the party of God, the party of the Jews and Christians. And it's been an up, uphill struggle for you because of the fact that it is a spiritually based party. Right. Based on spiritual ideas. Right. And, and I want you to elaborate on, on something we talked about before we came on today, and that is that, that basically socialism is, uh, is atheism. Very and correct. It's inimical to both Judaism and Christianity. Very correct. And one of the things I wanted to share is today people are asking, how is it that Europe took, on, took in so many millions of Muslims? And it started in 1973 with the Yom Kippur War, and I don't know if you remember or other people remember, but there were big lines, long lines for gasoline mm -hmm. because there was an Arab embargo. And the Europeans suffered even more than the Americans. So the Europeans came up with a plan to patch up with the Muslims, and the Muslims said, this is the price. You want oil? We'll give you the oil. You've got to support us in the UN against Israel on every question. You have to take in Muslims. You have to do all kinds of things to promote Islam, and we'll give you the oil. So these socialists who don't believe in God and don't believe in Christ and don't believe in the Bible said, okay, there is no more God. We'll do whatever you say. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Now, one of the things that I've been saying all along is that an atheist cannot understand Islam. Hmm. To understand Islam, you have to believe in God because Allah is Satan. You remember I have a three-year jail sentence in Switzerland for saying that Allah is Satan, mm -hmm. and Islam is not a religion but a criminal psychosis. I remember it well. Okay, so if you are a communist, and I was in Moscow, and I spoke, I was interviewed by Radio Moscow. Oh, no, 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 we, we don't have any more God. We believe in the solidarity of the nations, including the Muslims. I said, that's baloney. The Muslims have been fighting the Russian people for a thousand years. You've been fighting the Turks for a thousand years. In the end, he agreed with me. So the problem here is that socialist politicians, including in New York City or in Washington, but when the moment you do not believe in God, you can't understand who is Satan. And there is a Satan out there. And so you would interpret, uh, in that case, you would interpret Islam as sort of uh, left-wing. Uh, socialist. In other words, you would say we have a kind of a, a natural brotherhood here with Islam. It is not socialist. It is anti-socialist. But they will gang up on Judeo-Christian America with the socialists and with the communists, with the atheists to destroy the backbone of this United States of America, which is great because it's a Christian country. The bottom line is to destroy Christianity. That's what those people want to do. And the socialists want to destroy Christian America, and the Muslims want to destroy Christian America. So you have this unholy matrimony in which they work together. Then they'll fight. Then in the end, they'll come against the, the socialists and atheists too. And you've been writing about this for years. Twenty-seven years. And people, I think, sometimes listen to you, but many times they do not. They just seem incapable of hearing. My question at this point would be: uh, Where do you see this going? We have a new president. We have a new president who is much more favorable toward, uh, toward Israel. Uh, what's going to happen from your perspective? Well, that's my whole point. We are uh, witnessing a Christian revival in America. And they were hoping that, I'm trying to, to understand the engineering of the election process for the Democrats, and what we saw was a lot of people are saying all of a sudden, you know what, let's give this other guy a chance. Republicans versus Democrats, Republicans versus Democrats. And you know the pendulum swings back and forth every eight years virtually, okay? Sure. So eight years I was depressed. I didn't feel I was contributing anything. And then with Trump's victory, I said, all of a sudden, I can't believe it, I can't believe it. I, I virtually cried when he was from happiness when Trump was elected. And I feel America is coming back to its senses. Wow. And you have, by the way, I think stated, stated this very, very well. Uh, from your perspective now, as someone who wants to establish a uh, party in the Knesset in Israel, uh, you are a man of politics, you're also a spiritual man. Uh, do you see uh, less of an impediment to your work now? Do you see yourself moving forward uh, uh, in a new uh, medium? I feel like this. I feel that regardless of whether or not I live or die, if you're going to have 10 million Jews and Christians moving to Israel from the West, 
there has to be a political party that will represent the Jews and the Christians right. from the West. And if it's 10 million people, that's going to outnumber the six and a half million that are there already. Hmm. So I think that this political party that I'm founding will be the biggest party in Israeli politics. And this could all happen after July 1st. Once the party is submitted, we start our campaign. And I think this is going to catch like wildfire. It's under the radar. Nobody is waiting for this to happen. Avi Lipkin, the next time we talk to Avi, he'll be here talking about a couple of DVDs he's produced to go along with his seven books, is it? Correct. Uh, yeah. Seven's a good number, good yes. biblical number. And uh, I hope that you'll uh, keep watching because uh, Avi always has uh, a viewpoint that's just a little bit different than anything we, we encounter in, in our normal lives. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Avi Lipkin, uh, keep watching everybody. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.